Mustafa, do you know Nadia, my brother's beautiful 13-year-old daughter? That evening, I bought a pound of apples and set out for the hospital to visit Nadia. I knew that there was something, something about it that my mother and my sister-in-law were hiding from me. I loved Nadia. I loved her from habit, the same habit that made me love all that generation, which had been so brought up on defeat and displacement that it had come to think that a happy life was a kind of social deviation. I entered the white room very calm. Ill children have something of saintliness and how much more so if the child is ill as a result of cruel, painful wounds. Nadia, Nadia was lying on her bed, her back propped up on a pillow over which her hair was spread like a thick pelt. There was a profound silence in her wide eyes and a tear always shining in the depths of her black pupils. Her face was calm and still, but eloquent, as the face of a tortured prophet might be. And Nadia was still a child, but she seemed more than a child, much more, and older than a child, much older. Nadia, I've no idea whether I was the one who said it or whether it was someone else behind me, but she raised her eyes to me and I felt them dissolve me like a piece of sugar that has fallen into a hot cup of tea. And together with her slight smile, I heard her voice. Uncle, have you just come from Kuwait? Then her voice broke in her throat and she raised herself with the help of her hands and stretched out her neck towards me. I patted her back and sat down near her. Nadia, look, I brought you presents from Kuwait, lots of presents. I'll wait till you can leave your bed completely well and healed and then you'll come to my house and I'll give them to you. I've bought you the red trousers you wrote and asked me for. Yes, I, I bought them. It was a lie. Born of the tense situation. But as I uttered it, I felt that I was speaking the truth for the first time. Nadia trembled as though she had had an electric shock and lowered her head in a terrible silence. I felt her tears wetting the back of my hand. Say something, Nadia, say something. Don't you want the red trousers? She lifted her gaze to me and made as if to speak, but then she stopped, gritted her teeth, and I heard her voice again, coming from far away. Uncle... She stretched out her hand, lifted the white coverlet with her fingers and pointed to her leg, amputated from the top of the thigh. I went out of the hospital in Gaza that day. The blazing sun filled the streets with the colour of blood. And Gaza was brand new, Mustafa. You and I never saw it like this. The stones piled up at the beginning of the Shaiya quarter where we lived had a meaning. This Gaza in which we had lived and with whose good people we had spent seven years of defeat was something new. 
it seemed to me just a beginning. I don't know why I thought it was just a beginning. I imagined that the main street that I walked along on the way back home, yeah, I imagined it was only the beginning of a long, long, long road leading to Safad. Everything in this Gaza throbbed with sadness, which was not confined to weeping. It was a challenge. More than that, it was something like reclamation of the amputated leg. I went out into the streets of Gaza, streets filled with blinding sunlight. And they told me that Nadia had lost her leg when she threw herself on top of her little brothers and sisters to protect them from the bombs and flames that had fastened their claws into the house. Nadia could have saved herself. She could have got out, run away, rescued her leg. But she didn't. Why? No, my friend, I won't come to Sacramento and have no regrets. No. And nor will I finish what we began together in childhood. That obscure feeling that you had as you left Gaza, that small feeling must grow into a giant one deep within you. It must expand. You must seek it in order to find yourself here among the ugly debris of defeat. I won't come to you, but you return to us. Come back to learn from Nadia's leg, amputated from the top of the thigh, what life is and what existence is worth. Come back, my friend. We're all waiting for you.